we were halfway down the stairs when I heard it. I heard one of the doors back up the stairs opening. I turned back to look up there, pointed my flashlight up into the black, I couldn't see anything. I asked the kid if there was someone else here with him, but, he was just staring off into space with this look on his face, like he wasn't seeing what I was seeing. Trapped in his own head. I figured I'd get him out of the house and then me and my partner would do a proper sweep of the place. And we were nearly to the front door when it happened. No one believes me, about what happened next. They think I'm a crazy old bastard, a liar, or worse. It's why I'm not on the force anymore. But then, I'm guessing whoever pointed you my way told you that, didn't they? Told you to come listen to the mad old man with his crazy story. Well we got this far so I might as well finish it. And if you don't want to believe it that's your own damn business. We were heading for the door when I heard it. The creak of a floorboard behind me. I turned, and, I swear, that place must have been goddamn soundproof for my partner to have not heard the scream I let out. Stood behind me was this man. He was dressed in this black suit and wearing this godawful thing over his face. This polished wooden mask painted with these bright reds and blues. Big red smile painted across the lips of this thing. Looked like something from some nightmare circus or a toy shop of horrors. He just stood there. Posed with his arms out and his body craned forward. The kid, he goes into a screaming fit. I whip my gun out, tell the guy to take a step back and that's when I heard the noise coming from the stairs. Someone's coming down the stairs. I take my eyes off the guy in the mask just long enough to look, and coming down those stairs, I tell myself it has to be people who were dressed like those dolls on the bed. Three girls with long blonde hair and white dresses and masks like those dolls' faces. Because what was in that bedroom was dolls. Inanimate. Wood and stuffing and glass. And dolls don't move. Dolls don't come down the stairs, twisting and jerking and flopping like that. They didn't say a word. None of them. But as soon as my eyes were off that man in the mask, he shot forward. His fist got me hard in the gut. Felt like he had fists made out of stone or iron. Wind was knocked right out of me and the next blow hit me on the jaw and took me off my feet, sent me sprawling to the ground. The kid was screeching and clawing at the ground, howling out what might have been words or just some grunting noises. The man in the mask and the girls shoot forward. I mean they move fast. Faster than I've ever seen any damn thing move in my life. They're on the kid. The kid screaming and crying. Crying for his mom, crying for God. The girls are hacking at him. They've got these things in their hands, that look like the biggest goddamn sewing needles you've ever seen, and they're jamming them, in and out of this poor bastard, as they lift him up like he weighs nothing. I can hear the kid howling for me to help him as they drag him through the house. I'm up on my feet. My head feels like it's going to split open from that punch the bastard in the suit gave me, but I'm on my feet. I point my gun at them and I get off a shot. I could swear I hit one of them but I must have missed. I must have missed because they don't even flinch, don't even pause for a second. They're dragging this kid towards an open door in the kitchen. I stagger after them. Beyond the door there are stairs, stairs leading down into the basement. I can hear the kids' screams getting quieter and quieter. I run back outside and my partner looks at me like he's seen a ghost. I tell him we need to call in for backup. 
I'm babbling, my head is ringing. I can't remember exactly what I said but I remember the way he looked at me. I tell him the kids in there, that those things are killing him. That they've got him down in the basement. And then everything goes black. When I woke up I was in the hospital. Apparently, the blows I'd taken were worse than I'd thought. I'm in the hospital and people want to talk to me. They want to know what really happened in the house. They want to know what I actually saw and where the kid is. I repeat the story. I tell them about the man and the girls in the masks. About them dragging the kid into the house's basement. I tell them I know how nuts it must sound. I ask about the kid, if he's okay. I found out they searched that house from top to bottom. No sign of the kid. No sign of the man or the girls in the masks. The doll people as I'd called them when I'd been babbling away to my partner that night. They ask me if I'm on any medication right now. They ask me if I've been using any illegal drugs, or drinking on duty. I can't figure out why they're treating me like a liar or a damn criminal. I tell them again, and again, that no, I'm not drunk, and I'm not on anything, and that I saw what I saw. That they need to start looking for the kid and those freaks. They tell me that of course they're looking for the kid. But that there was nothing in the house like what I'd seen. They don't believe me. My own partner doesn't believe me. They tell me that the stairs to the second floor of the house are gone. Rotted and broken. That I couldn't have found a kid on the second floor of that house. And they tell me, they tell me the house hasn't got a basement. This was the only other account I was able to obtain while in Howard's Creek. I can confirm that a teenage boy, with the same name as the one given by Fred C. in his account, did go missing around the time he claims this happened. There's no mention of the house near road in any of the official accounts which present it more as a possible abduction slash runaway situation. While I could not obtain any more accounts of the doll people from the people of the town I did, as per foundation protocol in this situation, do a check of the house. I found it to be in far worse repair than Fred C.S. account would have suggested. Much of the building is inaccessible due to the damage. Several gaping holes have been left in the structure's roof that have allowed rainwater to fall freely into it. The house does have a basement. Exploration of it yielded no sign of habitation. It contained several old workbenches and tools, and a faded poster upon one of the walls making reference to Albert's Marvelous Marionettes, with artwork of several garish-looking puppets and a performance date of February of 1923. The only other item of note was a rather grimy and cracked white wooden mask. Personal recommendation for this site, observation slash extraction though as always I leave that entirely in the foundation's hands e. so that's what I found like I say there are more papers there were also some photographs included with this mainly of an old house that looks like it's in a pretty poor state some that might have been taken inside it, including one of that poster and one of the mask. There's also a piece of paper with the words, call Maria F. back, find out about the book, but no further information and no phone number for whoever this was. I found a few places named Howard's Creek online but to my knowledge my sister never visited any of them. And I've no idea what the foundation she mentions is. If anyone has any ideas about who my sister might have been working for, or whether this is real, or just some work of fiction she was working on before she passed please help.
and please be respectful. My sister and I didn't always get along but she was a good person. I miss her. Hey, so, this is an end of this story, and I can't stress this enough, all the credits go to the author, Samantha R29. Please go and show her some love, or if you want to read more well-made stories, go check her out, she has many more awesome stories to read. All the links will be in the description below. Other than that, if you have enjoyed this different take on the videos, let me know and I'll try my best to make some more. Of course, that all depends on the stories I find, so if you have any of your own personal stories, you wish to share of course, use my email, linked in the description, and send them to me which will be used in the next video, if you want it that way. Anyways, hope you enjoyed, until next time. Faceless. Voiceless.